Are you going to address the pogrom in Amsterdam? The pogrom. There's nothing more ridiculous than looking at a bunch of fucking soccer hooligans who are insanely fucking violent across the board. This is the one thing that transcends ideology and being like, it seems like this time, this battle that took place amongst soccer hooligans is actually a, a unique one. Soccer fans beating each other up. What has happened to Europe? <laughs> if, when I first heard about it, I was like, wow, I'm shocked to find out that uh, soccer fans are fighting. It's a bit more than this. Uh, yeah, it is. But in many ways, it's also not. Like this, this is first and foremost, primarily football fans. Okay. That's the first layer of, of complexity. All right. Anyway, here, Maccabee Tel Aviv hooligans chant racist anti-Arab slogans ahead of match in Amsterdam. Let the Israeli army win. Fuck the Arabs. And then, uh, and then every other outlet, of course, in the Western world, uh, I think, didn't necessarily cover that aspect of it at all, like or what events that triggered uh, this back and forth clash. And instead, specifically said that this was a racially charged anti-Semitic pogrom that was conducted. Violent attacks in Amsterdam tied to anti-Semitism from the New York Times. Reporting on the racist Maccabee Tel Aviv fans is exactly what you expect. The New York Times just basically published an Israeli press release not mentioning once that the Israeli mob was chanting about killing Arabs and mocking slaughtered Palestinian children. I think originally, uh, the way that this uh, story unfolds is uh, that there is a... A match between Ajax Amsterdam and Maccabee Tel Aviv. At the beginning of the match, there's a one minute silence observed for those who died in the floods in Spain. The Israeli, uh, the Israeli hooligans refused to pay respect and tried to break the silence by behaving shamefully and inappropriately. Is like what I, A Ajax, A Ajax, Ajax. Okay, sorry. And then the chants that you heard were, uh, were, were repeated all around. It bugged me that I couldn't find the video of the entire genocidal song, but then came Maccabee Tel Aviv fans. They arrived at Ben Gurion Airport, fleeing from the fake pogrom, and started singing the entire song. <laughs> yeah, one of the lines is, Why is school out in Gaza? There are no children left there. The song that they're singing, full lyrics of the MTA fan song from Maccabee fans website, second verse is, Why is there no school today in Gaza? There are no children left there. The site, the site as the song is used specifically in games versus Palestinian team B'nai Sakin or depending on the security situation. The Judeo-Nazi ultra fans of Maccabee Tel Aviv march around Amsterdam singing, let the IDF win, f*** the Arabs. The police seem to be cool with it. I can confirm they had like 50 people working to change up the entire article. Top level editors made them move up paragraphs. They were buried about them tearing down Palestine flags. I think this was total oversight and pushing out a story too quick. Yeah. So the ole, 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 ole. Like that's a very common uh, chant. It's a very, very common chant in, in soccer. It's, it's international. Uh, everyone has their own version of it. Uh, it seems like the Israeli Maccabee one is insanely fucking racist. <laughs> so how do we get here? Uh, was this just like unrestricted anti-Semitism overflowing? In order to continue framing the anti-racist counterattacks on the Israeli football fans as anti-Semitic, any news organization will have to explicitly ignore or spin the video evidence that clearly shows that they were racist and a violent mob. <laughs> Video has emerged of the crowd swearing and chanting anti-Arab slogans in Amsterdam amid a violent incident in which Israeli football fans were targeted, including but not limited to tearing down Palestinian flags. The 
המשטרה. which is exactly what the New York Times did in its first reporting of the incident early this morning. Slogans versus slurs. This was an interesting point from the Reuters. Videos on social media showed riot police intervening in clashes with some attackers shouting anti-Israeli slurs. But some footage also showed Israeli supporters chanting anti-Arab slogans before Thursday's evening match. So if you're saying something anti-Israeli, that's a slur. If you're saying something that's anti-Arab, that's a slogan. Hmm. The anti-Israeli slur is, of course, Zionist. The anti-Arab slogan is, you know, calling them uh, barbaric monsters. But that's besides the point, you know? One is uh, clearly significantly more uh, important than the other, it seems. Now, let's take a look at what TRT uh, uh, reported on in the dark side of Maccabee Tel Aviv Championship League match. But overall, the point is... They ripped down Palestinian flags. They were uh, chanting anti-Palestinian, anti-Arab shit, being incredibly fucking racist, as, for the record, most football fans are. Just so you understand, this is not exclusive to the Israeli football fandom, okay? If you think that this is exclusive to the Israeli football fandom, you got to understand it's not. Like, fucking Italian flags will throw bananas at their own black players, all right? Ultras across the board, hooligans across the board, make up a massive amount of neo-Nazi paramilitaries even. Azov Battalion, which originally started as a neo-Nazi brigade, is comprised originally almost entirely of football fans from Ukraine that were neo-Nazis themselves. Like football hooligans across the board have incredibly bad politics with some exceptions right you'll see like some irish or some scottish ultras that are like in marxist leninist or whatever but like usually it's very commonplace here it is football sounds over argentina's racist chanting is deafening and damning you got ss lazio lazio in italy and also they love to fucking fight they love to get drunk they love to get belligerent they love to get racist and then they love to fucking fight yeah, Lazio, also known as Nazio. This guy says, I went to Amsterdam recently and left in one piece because I respected the locals and I didn't chant about killing children. Then this guy responds, locals. Local in Amsterdam means tourists. Dutch people are like 5% of the people you encounter. Those damn Jews deserve it. says, stop Jew hate. If I would have went around shouting about killing people's kids, I would have gotten smacked and I deserved it. Make of that what you will. <laughs> A few years ago, a Croatian team's fans were banned from attending games for a while due to the grass on the pitch having a swastika being cut into it. So just normal football fans things. Oh, yeah. It's just, it's just how it works. <laughs> Seems to me like it's a bunch of fucking rowdy, incredibly racist fans of footy behaving in the way that they normally do. Now, of course, it's fucking unacceptable. Um, and at first I thought this was like, again, somewhat of an anti-Semitic canard when people were like, dude, Mossad was with those guys. When someone in my chat said Mossad was amongst them, I was like, shut the f up. Come on, dude. And then it turns out it's true. Just in case, Mossad agents joined Maccabee Tel Aviv football club trip to Amsterdam from the Jerusalem Post. In the first year of the revamp format, the yellow and blue currently sit in 34th place out of 35, uh, 36 teams in the Europa League with three losses from three games. I don't think most hooligans laughing about children. No, what? They absolutely would. What are you talking about? Hello? Don't act like these guys, the, the fans of like Maccabee Tel Aviv football club, 
are are uniquely racist. The only difference in this circumstance is that like they are upholding current existing genocide. But no, I, I this is every <laughs> guys. I'm Turkish. I think maybe that's the reason. Like I'm speaking to Americans right now. And I don't think they understand. Like, they think, oh, like, the Bills Mafia. Like, no, this is, like, we're talking about direct links to organized crime. Direct links to, like, fascist, real existing fascist movements. We're talking about people who are straight the f*** up, like, brown shirt paramilitaries uh, that, that operate within that framework and will genuinely dish out violence, okay? Racialized violence. So the idea that this is, like, simply a... Um, you know, oh, football hooligans don't operate like this is ridiculous. I tried to explain to you, Italian fans of their own fucking club will throw bananas at black players, okay? This is not unique, which is why it's kind of funny that people are, like, losing their minds over it. An Israeli politician has more accurate analysis of what happened in Amsterdam than most of the Western media. The spirit of Israeli fascism has reached Amsterdam. Fans go on a violent rampage, beating, tearing up my goat, uh, Dr. Ofer Kassif again, uh, beating, tearing up Palestinian flags in the streets as if they were an occupying force and shouting Nazi slogans in favor of the extermination of a nation and whining when the situation degenerates into complete chaos and violence returns to them like a boomerang. Any violence is obscene and unacceptable. Both sides should be held accountable for their hooliganism and the Israeli media, as usual, approaches, hides, and distorts reality in the service of the authorities. And it's not just the Israeli media that's doing that. It is, of course, the damn near entirety of Western media seemingly doing that as well. They rolled into town with Mossad agents, started shit, and is now a pogrom because they lost the traditional Euro-style soccer fight. How do you get rolled up with operators watching your back? I feel like if an English soccer team had SAS backup, they'd at least be able to fight anyone else to a draw. The entire bogus recounting of what happened must be a wannabe jihadist. Getting a real groom on my friend. Okay. Anyway. The Dutch king compared it to the Holocaust? Oh my God. Dutch king, we failed the Jewish community during World War II last night. We failed them again. I'm done, dude. Um, anyway, here's Ayala Kobe. Breaking, Middle Eastern migrants continue to hunt down Jews in the streets of Amsterdam. I love that, like, everyone that is in defense of Israel will just immediately be so insanely Islamophobic. Like, there's no way of interpreting the situation with, like, Football hooligans clash or anything. It's like these f***ing barbaric Middle Eastern migrants. Ah! It's like, dude, you're a Nazi. You're a f***ing Nazi. The way you talk about people. Holy shit. Why are they always like this? Why? Why is every supporter of Israel immediately like, let me analyze the situation with like a breath, with, with like, you know, after taking a couple breaths, okay? Where are the police? Where is Europe? Europe has fallen. Anyway, here's the person. I'm the creator of this video. One, you're spreading fake news. This is a group of uh, Maccabee supporters starting a fight and beating one Dutch man. Two, delete this content. I didn't give you permission. Yeah. AFD's Beatrix Von Storch thanks the Greens for not adopting the AFD's position on imported Muslim anti-Semitism and the new anti-Semitism resolution to be passed on AFD support. Her, grand her granddad was a final head of the Third Reich. Oh, that's incredible. Oh, she is like a current existing neo-Nazi with direct ties to, uh, you know, the OG Nazi movement. Talking about how Muslims imported anti-Semitism to f***ing Germany.